What's up, Seeky Nation? Sneaky B here, back with all the news after week 15 of our Tennessee Titans franchise, where the Titans got absolutely demolished by Tom Brady and the Patriots. Mariota didn't even have a bad game for playing in Gillette Stadium on the road. However, Tom Brady, one of the greatest of all time, had to show him how it was done, and it led to a Titan loss. The road struggles continue for the Titans this season. However, we're a very good home team right now. We're 6-1 and one at home, but 1-6 and six on the road. We have one home game left up next week against the Texans and one road game left uh, so if we keep it the same pace we'll likely finish eight and eight however who knows maybe we can pull off a road win it's not going to be easy I'm pretty sure week 17 we're on the road in Indianapolis that's not going to be an easy game uh, and even the Texans you know any division game is not easy so anything can happen it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out going forward um, we will start scouting some players continue to work on who it is we want to draft. Now, one guy I want to look at really quick here, and uh, for those of you who know me, you know why. Will Hurst, Appalachian State. Unfortunately, he's the only Appalachian State guy available in the draft, but look at this. Pretty solid run block. I like that. Um, somebody to keep an eye on. We will add him to the watch list. You know, for a fourth-round guy, that's actually not all that bad. If he has a good combine, he could potentially be a steal. Uh, moving forward, running backs. Let's kind of see what we got going on here. We've already kind of scouted all the first moves. Uh, this is somebody to maybe keep an eye on. You know, he's supposed to be undrafted, but he's got an A juke move. Let's see what else. B plus elusive. Look at this. This is actually a pretty solid player. Um, he might not be all that athletic, hence him going undrafted, but I want to keep an eye on him. And if this guy actually has a good combine, we could be looking at a huge steal. Uh, in the seventh round, potentially. So definitely something to look at there. Uh, B-plus trucking, and he went to North Carolina. B-plus juke move, too. Uh, okay. Um, another guy to look at for a seventh round pickup, maybe. You know, there's some good guys available late in the draft here. This guy had a few of these guys have A-minus trucking. That's definitely something to look out for as well. Uh, fullbacks, I feel pretty comfortable with what we have there. Uh, wide receivers, you know, I do still want to add a wide receiver here. We've kind of scouted quite a bit of things here. Um, but we'll continue to look around, see if we can find a steal. Uh, definitely, yeah, we're keeping an eye on him for sure. Uh, hopefully he has a good combine. And combines can really change the entire draft. Uh, we did a, a draft in our Sim series last night. We kind of saw a good take on how to find some steals, which I'm pretty stoked about. So hopefully we can do that. And carry that through to this. Um, who else? I'm trying to figure out where else I want to go with. Obviously, our secondary needs help. We've scouted quite a bit in the secondary here. But last night, um, or our game against the Patriots, just unacceptable. You know, we cannot have that kind of game. It's definitely not good for us. And we need guys that are going to cover. You know, Huff, a player I like a whole lot. He's been a big playmaker for us. In recent weeks, he has been absolutely terrible in coverage, and he's been giving up some big plays, and that is not good for our team. Uh, giving up a few big plays, it's going to suck the momentum out of your team, and that's something we definitely don't want to see happen again. So we need to kind of scout some more, see if there's going to be some good players that we can get. Uh, I only have one ability left. We'll just look at this guy. Why not? Why not? A minus throw power. Okay. Um, it's just going to take time, though, but we do need to build this team up. You know, the struggles continue. I'll do that afterwards. Uh, interesting thing from last week, you know, ever since we changed the sliders around, I did want to make it more realistic. Bishop Sankey had it a little bit too easy. Now, we have a great offensive line, and that is part of it. That's part of the reason he was doing so well early in the season. Um, but he was still having just monster game after monster game after monster game. And it was a little frustrating because I do want to keep realism in this series. Um, however, David Cobb, I feel like, has earned a spot starting. He had eight carries last week and broke six tackles. He was insane in the uh, receiving game out of the backfield. The guy played incredibly and he has been. Ever, ever since we've given him time, you know, the guy has come and he's performed. And I think he's going to earn a starting spot here. Um, I just want to see what he can do. I'm pretty sure we're out of the playoffs at this point. It might not be for certain yet, but I feel like David Cobb showed a lot of heart with all those broken tackles, uh, busting off a huge receiving play. You know, he had a few good runs that were actually called back uh, because of a late holding call that didn't really affect the run. 
Uh, so I definitely feel like he's earned some time. This is a little bit difficult, though, because neither McCluster or Sankey have really played bad this season. Now, Sankey obviously hasn't been playing as great as he was earlier in the year, but that's to be expected. You know, we made the sliders more difficult, um, and it kind of matches his talent a little bit more with what we've been seeing from him now. But he hasn't really played horribly. McCluster has been incredible uh, as a second down or a second uh, running back there, especially in the receiving game. He's been getting a lot of touchdowns for us on screen passes and stuff like that. And he's definitely a threat. Um, Dorio Green Beckham has been struggling a lot since we uh, adjusted the sliders, which again adds to the realism of it, so I'm okay with it. Um, but he definitely hasn't been giving us what we saw from him earlier in the season. Uh, moving forward, let's see what we got. We've already seen the Texans lineup. We've already seen the Colts lineup, so we don't need to do either of those things. Uh, and as you see, the Jaguars have fallen to 8-6, and six, so they're still only a game ahead of us. There's two games left on the schedule. We can still make the playoffs. Um, I believe it's going to require two wins from us and two losses from them. I could be wrong on that. Uh, it's definitely not going to be easy. Again, we're a really bad road team, and we have another road game left. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Let's check out the rest of the playoff picture for both sides here. AFC, obviously, the Patriots are winning the AFC East here. The Ravens are winning the AFC North. The Broncos are winning the AFC West. Well, the Chargers are tied with them, but the Broncos have the tiebreaker. Uh, Bengals, again, uh, behind the Ravens over here. So the Bengals and the Chargers are the two teams in the wild card at this point. Um, and then uh, we have the AFC North. Nope. AFC South. There we go. The Jaguars. So, yeah, there, there's way too many teams ahead of us right now for those wild card spots. It's definitely not looking very promising. Uh, and we've lost two in a row. Hopefully this win uh, at home, if we can pick it up, is going to benefit us. So the Texans are 6-8 and eight right now. They have won their last game. That doesn't mean a whole lot, though. We'll see how that game plays out. Cowboys sitting at 12-2 and two right now, winning the NFC East. The uh, Saints are leading the way in the NFC South. The Seahawks in the NFC West. And uh, the Eagles fighting for that first wild card spot. And then you have the Packers winning the NFC North, meaning the Lions are in that second uh, wild card spot right now. Anything can change, though. The Vikings are right on their heels, and they're in the same division. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had another game against each other here. Um, Cardinals might be out of it. This is actually a pretty weak NFC West right now. And uh, NFC altogether. Uh, looks like there might be, there could potentially be a team with a losing record making the playoffs. It's not for certain, but it could happen. Uh, so interesting to see all of that there. Let's see if we have any draft stories to look at here. And we could check into re-signing some players again. Um, defensive players, yes, we have already seen that one. Okay, so let's move forward. And we'll briefly check out the uh, stat or the player of the year week from last week, and then we'll check out the player of the year, see how that's going. Just the MVP stuff. Aaron Rodgers, 43 of 58, five touchdown passes, two interceptions. Uh, James Lair, Nidus, 11 tackles, two interceptions, and a fumble forced. Allen, 14 tackles and two interceptions. And Tom Brady absolutely torched our defense, 26 of 29, 414 yards, four passing touchdowns for him he did throw the interception he only got sacked once from Avery Williamson uh definitely was not the greatest game for us there and we're going to need to pick it up here in the last two weeks if we want to have a shot at anything uh so it's going to be important that this team steps up and makes some plays guys that is going to be it for this episode I hope you enjoyed if you did please smash that like button it helps me out quite a lot and I will see you guys in week 16 as we take on the Texans. First thing, though, before we do that is people have been asking me to see the injury report for the other team. Uh, so we will go check that out really quick. And Arian Foster is going to be out with an injury. That's a huge blow to them. Uh, Pagan's out with an injury. Ryan Mallett is out with an injury. Cecil Shorts, who I'm pretty sure had a touchdown against us in our first matchup, is out with an injury. And Jalen Strong is out with an injury, so they are missing quite a lot of weapons on offense here. Their defense is intact, and we know how good their defense is. But offensively, you know, they could struggle. Our defense is very hit and miss, but they tend to step up at home. And this is going to be a home game, so it's going to be an interesting uh, to see how it all plays out, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.